Well, hello. Let me quickly transition. What's up? What's up? Hello and good morning. You have just witnessed me making coffee and uh, not striving in the barista game, but you know what? <sighs> Taste is amazing. Is it the best latte art? No. Will I get there eventually? Maybe. <laughs> we don't know. So let me quickly change the atmosphere by turning off house music <laughs> and let's putting in the good old Leighton. Is that okay? I think it is. Okay. <laughs> wonderful good Tuesday. Um, I hope you had a wonderful Monday yesterday. Mm. And today's shout out is to all German nurses who are on a strike today. Shout out to you. You're doing good. You're doing right. I'm very proud of you. Um, keep on doing what you're doing. Don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't be doing that. Right. Um, and just like that, I think we're just going to start. Hmm. I don't have too much time because I actually do need to go soon. But I do have enough time to get some puzzles in and train the brains. So let's uh, put it here. All right, everybody ready? I'm ready. Cool, let's continue. Where did we leave off? Let me think, let me think. Lador Mansion, yeah, sure. Um, we said hello to Angela. We get a recap. Fucking great. All right. Hold up a second. I don't know if this is too quiet or if it's too loud. We will see. I can, I guess, put it like that and then... Ah! All right, everybody in chat who's able to tell me whether or not music is off, please do. I'm gonna get into narrator voice now. Leighton is reunited with his old friend Angela after 18 years and asks her for details on a masked gentleman case. They agree to meet again the following day. In the meantime, Leighton wishes to find out more about the petrification incident. Oh, that was it already? Okay, okay. Not too much narration needed. Not, not too much. The Lador Mansion Parlor. Well, we got Angela, and currently she is home alone because her husband is not here. And um, I think we can look for some coins. Yes, baby. And I think Angela already told us to. Oh, a puzzle. Oh, I think we've stumbled upon one of our exclusive hidden puzzles. Oh shit, that looks hard. <laughs> Bunny hop swap. It's only 20 picrets, so it shouldn't be too hard. Let's see, let's see. Here are some rather unusual rabbit toys. There are three rules. Number one, the rabbits can only move by jumping horizontally, diagonally, or vertically over other rabbits. They can, that's the second rule, Jump over any number of rabbits at once. And number three is a white rabbit will turn brown when jumped over and vice versa. Can you make all the rabbits here turn brown following the rules given above? Oh no! Uh, okay. So... A rabbit jumping over turns brown, right? Not the ones jumped over. 
Oh, a rabbit will turn brown once jumped over. So let's say I move this one. Oopsies. I move this one here and this one there. And this one there and this one there. Then I got all the middle ones brown, but then I got two here. And then if I move that one here, one will be brown. And if I turn that one there, then I got two white ones. I mean, there ain't no rule technically that If a brown one is jumped over again, it will turn white again, right? So technically, I could just go and try, I guess. So let's set that one and that one. Oh, wait a minute. If I send that one over... I can jump these and that. <laughs> mm. This one and that one. This. Oh. Ha! Wait! Ah, oh, shit! <laughs> the rule is that when you jump over. A brown one, it will reset to white. Fudge. Oh, god damn it. Gosh darn it, mate. Ugh. That's tricky. Okay, let me restart. I need to rethink that. Okay, so... My goal is to turn all the white rabbits brown. Hmm. I think the first few moves should be these. But then it gets a bit tricky. Because if I, oh, never mind. <laughs> I may have overthought this a little. I may have overthought this in the tiniest way. Correct! And all it took was a few big leaps from our brave, bouncing bunnies. It just goes to show what a little courage can do. Right. Let me just quickly check if the Discord notifications was working. Yes, it was! <laughs> Lovely! Okay. I'm so happy when things work, because usually things don't work. That was certainly a most enjoyable challenge. It was. I want another one. Another one. It certainly is the kind of house you'd expect in the city's founder. Good thing it didn't completely break. Um, <clears throat> what? <laughs> what? This is not what I wanted. We will be right back. <gasps> oh my god, promotion offers, yes! 
Well, do I need a window capture or do I need a game capture? Let me check. Definitely not a game capture. <coughs> Oh! There we go. Okay. Um, we're back on track, ladies and gentlemen. We're back on track. Act like nothing happened. <coughs> okay. Um, right. Let's see if we can go to anywhere else in this house. I guess not. So we have to leave. I can't wait to get to the hotel. I think I could eat a horse. And I'm so tired. My eyes are falling out. Well, go very Luke, uh, soon, Luke, I promise. There's just one more thing that I'd like to check, if your stomach approves. Oh, um, of course, Professor. I'll feed my hunger for information instead. <laughs> then let's revisit Celebration Boulevard. We may be able to find some new clues if it's quietened down. The Professor has spoken. And therefore, we will start to walk. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Mordor, okay. On the contrary, I should be the one apologizing. No, really, sir, it was I who I beg your pardon. <laughs> but are you perchance Professor Layton? Well, I am indeed. <laughs> you have me at a disadvantage, Mr... Oh, how terrible of me. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mordon, personal assistant to Mr. Lador. How do you know about the professor? Mrs. Lador told us some days ago to accept your expect your arrival. When I saw you just now, I merely wondered who this fine gentleman with this extraordinarily fine hat may be. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Mordon. Please allow me to introduce my companions, Emmy Altabar and Luke Triton. I do not wish to be presumptuous, but I take is that you are leaving? What? Why is Snickerstream pooping out today? Can I change any settings to make it more balanced? Picks best quality for everything. <laughs> oh, whoa. it is indeed a bit shite. Sorry, people. I do really not know. There we go. How mysterious. We will have to pull, um, solve a puzzle mystery ourselves in a stream. And that is why Snickerstream is pooping out all the time. Alright. Please stay. 
I beg, please. Okay. <clears throat> I see, I see. Yes, Mr. Lador is rushed off his feet with all the chaos. It's a miracle he can run on so little sleep. Excuse the pun. I shall inform Mr. Lador that you were here. Please forgive him for being unable to welcome you himself. Well, I believe I should be taking my leave. Do be careful. The streets near here are in a terrible shambles. Likewise, Mr. Modal. Mr. Lador must be a very busy man to need an assistant. Almost as busy as you, Professor. This place may be called the City of Miracles, but I'm quite sure most of its prosperity was born of hard work. Now let's head back to Celebration Boulevard. Perhaps our work on the case will relieve Henry's burden. What does Henry do? Why is he so busy? Okay. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> now if that isn't our dear friend Albus. <laughs> Those footsteps. Why I would recognize that firm, resolute sound anywhere. I need to see... I need not see to identify a gentleman. I am hidden very sneakily behind the facade before you. Find me, show me a zoom to be proud of. <laughs> Why is he so weird? Oh my god. Oh, puzzle. Whoever designed this toy car was no amateur. It's beautifully handcrafted. Toy cars are all right, but I much prefer cuddle toys. It wouldn't be a very nice to it wouldn't be very nice to curl up with a toy car, wouldn't it? I do like car puzzles though. Do you know any professor? Hold on, Luke. I've got a puzzle I've been itching to give you. Well. Puzzle 004. Dodgem detective. Wait, uh, I need to find a comfier way to sit. I was so proud when I was able to stream my Nintendo wirelessly to the PC. And then thinking, oh, I'll be able to play and chill on the couch, right? Right? And then I realized, nah, uh, -uh. I need sound to transmit, and therefore I'm sitting here hooked up to an aux cable. Alright, what do we have here? The photograph shown above was taken while a group of friends were driving dodgems. The person who took the photo was driving a white dodgem and she was facing towards. Where was she sitting when she took the photo? Circle the correct white dodgem. Oh, that's cute. Okay. We got number 8, 10, and probably 9 or whatever. And it's red, green, yellow to the left. And we can't see a blue one. Okay. Let me see. Red, green, yellow. Oh, it could be these. Red, green, and the yellow one is facing the green. Mm, that could work. It certainly can't be these because the white one is not facing those. These white ones, uh, this white one is also facing that direction and it can't be those because that's a blue one. Mm, that might be the correct one. That one is facing just whatever. This one is like a maybe because no, that's definitely a no because it couldn't see the yellow one from there. So that's a no. This one is also no, because there is a blue one. So I think we found our correct one here. Correct! That's great.
right? Correct. It was the dodging circle of Bob. Not a bad photo, eh? Now to decide where it goes on the mantelpiece. What is a mantelpiece? Well done. You've just bumped up my opinion of you. Wow, rude. <laughs> it was easy. The professor's number one apprentice never dodges a challenge. <laughs> I'm glad I have... I'm glad to have such a uh, driven companions on this investigation. Pun intended. Ah, oh, a toy car. I always had a fondness for them as a child. Do we speak to our lovely lovebird over here? Oh, you have returned, goddess who has stolen my heart. Is this a dream? Is this a waking dream? So brief and transient. Oh my god. Oh. I know where we think can find Aldous. But let me check if... No, nope, nothing else. Alright. Let's show him a zoom he's proud of. Oh, I am uncovered. I am undone. Like a tea cozy over my heart. It warms me to see you grow. Ah, Aldous. Oh, bravo! It takes great skill and art to detect a hidden man with such ease. Hooray! Was there something you wanted from us? You are right, there is something I would very much like to tell you about. It comes from the fruitful grapevine. Now focus your little magnifying glass on the metal box and examine it closely. Metal box, yes. Oh, you found a new item, stylish clay pot. This, my friends, is a collection item and one that will serve you so fashionably well. Throughout the city you may find scrap and treasure, rubbish and rar rarities, rubble and ransom. But whatever these things may be, it is you, my friends, who have the power to transform them into a collection. Soon your hoard will grow until it is grand enough to impress even the most seasoned collectors. Such items are scattered near and far, hither and thither, so do not miss a trick. I see. I must admit hunting for, for artifacts is rather a hobby of mine. Words spoken from the hard good, sir. Please let me reward you. Remember, where our destinies crossed at Celebration Boulevard, check the wooden box there again. I think it is time to take my leave, no? Enjoy your salubrious collection selection, my friends. And goodbye. And just like that, he's leaving with a fabulous exit. Do you think that man will ever stop shooting off after he's done talking? <laughs> the collection box has been added to the track. Eternally eccentric Aldous has given you a box to store the items you collect. The collection box has been added to the trunk. Use this box to store all the rare and fascinating items that you come across on your travels. These items are purely for enjoyment and have no bearing on the case. A full collection is its own reward. Okay. Well, that gives us one more thing to do on our travels. For now, we should continue back to Celebration Boulevard. Alright, alright. Oh! Ha! I will never miss a coin. I mean, I probably did miss coins already, but, you know. Try not to. Alright. Back to the map and back to Celebration Boulevard. <coughs> Was the little girl there before? Nope. 
Pirette. Hello, here for the show, are you? I do a performance in the marquee just there. Got me name on the sign and everything. They've had to cancel it today though. Half of our props got ruined in the panic. Proper wreck they were. That is incredibly unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear it. I took a gander at the people who turned to stone myself, but it got me wondering, what's the blooming point? Do you think she got something against the circus? Oh, he. Or maybe he just hates fun. Ah, that's an horrible thought. But there's no use getting down in the dumps when we've got smiles to put on their faces, you know? Here, why don't you try a puzzle? Oh, go on. It will make you dead happy. Never pronounce the H's. That's the that's a good old secret for a British accent. Just never pronounce H's. <laughs> a toasty toast, puzzle 007. Alright. After finishing work for the day and changing back into their normal clothes, the members of a circus troupe gather in the big tent to celebrate another successful performance. It's a bit nippy in there at night, so they're warming up with a few rounds of hot chocolate. It's hard to tell just by looking at the silhouettes, but there is at least one member of the troupe missing. Who is in the tent? Select each person who is present. Ooh, <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's a tricky one. So, wait, let me see. F with a few rounds of hot chocolate. Okay, um, I think we can all agree that this guy is there. He's standing in the middle. And I'm pretty sure that there is two people standing in front of each other because that guy is probably not drinking two hot chocolates. So... That woman is also there. The one with the... <laughs> with a Karen haircut. And then we got two people with like curly hair. I think this woman is sit woman sitting on the left. Huh. You see the one on the right? It seems like it should be this man. But I think that's just a vase with flowers because he's not holding any drink and also he looks suspiciously small. He should be the same size as the lady but he's awfully a lot smaller on the right so I don't think that this is an actual person. And then again I'm still puzzled who's laying down. The grandpa is definitely there because he's the one that's standing behind this babes. And then the big dude. Oof. I think that guy is the one laying down because you can see his nose. Why is he laying down though? <clears throat> Let me read the quest again. The members of a circus troop gather in the big tent to celebrate another six of one. It's a bit nippy in there at night, so they're warming up with a few rounds of hot chocolate. It's hard to tell just by looking at the silhouettes, but there is at least one member of the troop missing. Who's in the tent? Select each person. Ha! So it could be two people missing. There is at least one member of the troop missing. I think this guy is there, her is there, she's there. 
And this boy is there. I think it's the two on the right that I'm missing. The one on the right is definitely a vase. So I'm 100% sure the guy with the like goat beard is not there. But I don't know about the big boy. Why would he be laying down? I don't... Let's... Let's try. Ah, fuck. Take a deep breath and try again. <laughs> fuck. <coughs> Let's view some hints. There are three mugs raised, which means there must be three people raising a toast. Oh, right. Okay. One, two, three. Wait. But then... The one on the left is not a person? Just because she's not toasting doesn't mean she's not there. Pay close attention to the far ends of the tent. There is a silhouette that looks like a vase of flowers on the far right, but what about the silhouette on the far left? Is that a vase of flowers too? No, it has legs. What's that odd shape you can see below the two mugs in the middle? It seems to be lumpy. It seems too lumpy to be a table and too uneven to be a sofa. Why? It looks more like the silhouette of someone lying down. Have a look again at the silhouette on the far left. That looks like a vase of flowers. Can you see the legs? Looks like that must be lady. I don't know what that leaves. Just one of the lazy bones having a layout down and then who's that? Okay. So it was indeed that person laying down. All right. You cheeky bugger. All members aside from the chaps, second from the right, are present and accounted for. Let's hope they don't stay up too late. They've got another busy day ahead of them. All right. Hooray, you got it right. Oh, well done. You're a proper clever lot, aren't you? Ever since our troop got here, these mental miracles have kept happening. It's driving me a bit batty. I just hope the policemen don't go calling it magic, because let's be honest, it's not. Magic tricks aren't something to do to hurt people. They're meant to entertain. Absolutely. The sooner they catch that gentleman bloke, the better, I say. Maybe then we can all enjoy a bit of R&R, &R, eh? R&R? &R? Nothing anymore. <coughs> okay, I, th I think we've seen all that. So let's walk back to Boulevard. Well, the panic seems to have died down now. Hmm. The petrified victims have all been removed. But I hope we may find other better cl other clues. Puzzle. Wasn't today's carnival the most wonder fabulous thing ever? People turning to stalag minimum and everything. The masked dander man is amazable. I'm afraid what you're referring to was no show. Not a show? That's imposterous. How did he turn people into stone then? Fizzle me this. I don't know. His performance wouldn't be as impressive if we could explain it, would it? I suppose so. Actually, I saw a looky, spooking stranger lattering about. Do you think it was him? His face was hidden under a mischievous mask. This puzzle's mischievous too. Uh oh. Puzzle 008 Carnival Colours. Colourful flags have been strung up all over town for the carnival. There are only seven different designs of flag, but they are displayed in a variety of combinations. One such combination is the pattern shown in the top right corner. 
How many times does this pattern feature in the strings of flags shown above? Look carefully and write down the number. Okay. <clears throat> so when they say this specific kind of pattern, are we talking each individual flag? Or the exact sequence of green, white, white, purple, blue, yellow? Well, so we got one. This one ain't it. That one ain't it. So, for example, this one. Would this count as one or not? One such combination is the pattern shown in the top right corner. Okay, so the combination, I suppose, is the actual order. <clears throat> This could be technically one, but I'm like, how could I be sure? I don't know what's what's on the left. That one is not one. is one back here and there is one here so i would say it's either three or four these ones are definitely confirmed and this one is a maybe because i don't know what the third flag could be on the left How many times does this pattern feature in the strings of flags shown above? I mean, technically, if you would go very, very critically, it would not count towards it because it's technically, technically not shown. So I would say three. Blah. Maybe you're looking at this from the wrong perspective. Oh wait, um... Oh, I'm an idiot. This one ain't it. So it's two. I fell for the easiest freaking trap. So it's two. Yes. Why did I fall for this trap? God damn it. I'm throwing away pick reds today. I was so careful last time. And today I'm just like. <coughs> Wonder fabulent. Any dandelion who can do that is bound to catch that croon mono. I can't. I can't speak today. But all I know about the culprit was that he hid his face behind an amazable, mischievous mask. That's not too much to go on. It all happened in the middle of a parade. Very true. Many of the attendees and performers were wearing masks. Aw, oh, don't be such a spoil snail. You've got to think positive. 
That's a costume. There's a costume boutique in the shopping district. Maybe the masked dandelman bought his outfit there. Oh. You might even finish up on your case in one foul scoop. Hmm. Mr. Policeman. Oi, you three, for the love of stop. Um, sorry? Whew, that was a close shave. I thought we were about to lose our one precious lead for this case. You mean you found something? Oh yeah. Seen them horse tracks, we estimate about three of them galloping away from the carnival. We reckon they were left by our culprits. Otherwise, why would they be so clear among these thousands of footprints? What's more, they're going to the very same direction that our mystery man left in. Very suspicious, if you ask me. Um, yes. Have you thought of asking some witnesses, though? Of course we have. We're the police. And we'll grill those witnesses good and proper just as soon as we find some. It's difficult, you know, with Monte Dora being a tourist city, half of our witnesses will probably be on the first train home. We've seized all the statues in the area, but as for the identity of that man, we haven't got the first idea. I realised most of the people here were tourists when I as was asking around. No one seemed to know the Lador's. Nah, only the residents know about Mr and Mrs Lador, or about anything, really. I heard there's a boutique owner who knows everything that goes on in town, though. Now, what's the place called again? Sorry, it's completely slipped my mind, but it's somewhere in the shopping district, that's for sure. Head up the gallery plaza and take a left. You might have to just try the shops one by one. Thank you, we'll have a look around for this boutique you mentioned. Okay. That box I was supposed to have a look again. You found a new item, a knobbly cane. <laughs> Great. I love my knobbly canes. Okay, back to the plaza and take a left. Uh, we need to take a left to reach the shopping district. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> Boop. We have seen this man before, right? Hey, you heard you hear about the parade getting hit. Real shame. Too bad the police couldn't stop the bloke. Always a step behind, you know. Bet the costume shop lady knows more than the entire force combined. Might I ask where this costume shop is? Right there. Got plenty of carnival stuff for hire. Why? You're changing your costume. Um, something like that. Many thanks for your assistance, sir. Sure, no need to be so formal. The name's Neos. Seriously, people still act like that nowadays? That must be the boutique the policeman mentioned earlier. What a vivid selection they have. Well, let's go inside. Boop. Is this a barber's? Cricky, the prices are pretty steep. Oh. Hello, plantsies. What are you doing in the middle of the road? How do the buses get through here? That's an impressive array of brightly colored clothes. And we are gonna get some. Hello. Ludmilla. Hello there, come in, come in. Good evening, madam. May I ask if you are the owner of this establishment? 
Shush, not a word more. I know exactly what you're looking for. Hold on, I just have the thing. There, a dashing harlequin outfit for a fine gentleman. Uh, actually, we were hoping you could give us some information on the masked gentleman. Oh, you're that kind of customer. Why didn't you say so? All right, if you solve this puzzle, I'll tell you what I know. Puzzle 010, the long wait, 30 picrets. This delicatessen is quite the fashionable place to shop for groceries this season. You can always look through the shop window and see the queue of people waiting at the till. The window is largely covered in posters, but you can count how many people are in the queue today. Well, let's just count the shoes, shall we? Okay. There's one pair of shoes. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And that is one. Seven. So... One, two, three, four. Wait. Oh, this lady here doesn't have a pair of shoes, so I suppose she's working there? So she's behind the till? Well, that's a girl sitting on top of the counter. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what? I'm just gonna trust and just count the shoes. <clears throat> Fuck. Let's go for hands. Most of the faces are hidden by the posters in the window and some people are so short that you can't even see the top of their heads. So there is no way to count everyone just based on face and heads. That's why we counted the shoes. No one has their feet covered up by posters. Count all the feet you can find taking care in places where there are several pairs of feet and where the color blends in with the wall. Yes, look very carefully on the feet. Have you missed something? Not all the people in the queue have their feet on the floor. Have a look at the whole scene, blah, 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 okay. No one in the scene has both their feet covered by a poster, though that doesn't necessarily mean you'll see their feet below the posters. One person in the queue doesn't have their feet on the floor, one rather young person. Okay, fine. It's a bit shit, you know. Oh, she wasn't behind the till, she was on the back. Uh, fair, fair. Aren't we clever clogs? All right, what do you want to know? What do you know about the Mars gentleman? Not a great deal, actually. He turned up a month ago, no one knows from where. Started whipping up a storm in town, turning tourists into horses and such. He's obviously seeking attention. How he performs these tricks? Well, nobody knows. Some say it's magic. And that's all I know. But if you're doing an investigation, I do have something that may sharpen your reasoning skills. Who knows? It might even help your fashion sense, young man. What is it? It's called the One Stop Shop. Just a little puzzle game I made on a quiet day. It's easy once you get the hang of it. Just have a play around. You might learn something about shopkeeping too. Wow, this looks like a lot of fun. Thank you very much. <gasps> Shop mini game. 
another mini game. You got a new shop aisle, fresh fruits. Ludmilla has given you her handcrafted toy shop, the one stop shop. The shop's mini game has been added to the trunk. Appeal to your customer's shopping impulse to sell every item in your inventory. So we're selling the collectibles? Oh my god. There we go. Sorry, I need to turn the lights around because they're getting a bit bum. And I am getting blind. God. All right. If you manage to sell every item in every aisle, come back and see me. I'll have a little something specially prepared for you. Don't forget. Okay, I'll come and visit when I've finished them all. Let's go. I want to see what that's about. In the one-stop shop, your aim is to stock the shelves in such a way that the customer is certain to buy everything on display. Ludmilla decides where the first item goes and outlines it in red. She's then the boss and her decision is final, so there is no moving this item. Use the stylus to select goods from the top of the screen and place them on the shelves. While holding an item, parts of the aisle will turn it dark. Either the item is too large for that space or there is nothing there to support it. Also, you can hold an item to have Ludmilla tell you about its color and type. Once you've finished arranging the items, touch open shop to open for business. You won't be able to open the shop until the all the aisles items are on display. <clears throat> we have a customer! How exciting. Our first customer. Let's see, let's see how she goes about her shopping. Hey, yeah, I'd like to buy Fluffy the Teddy. Oh, no way. You've actually got him. So that's why Ludmilla picks the first item. She always seemed to know what the customer wants even before they come into the shop. It's a yellow teddy called Fluffy. Isn't it adorable? Once you catch their attention, customers will buy products on impulse. Oh my god, this is a bit too real. <laughs> Hold up a second. My OBS tells me that I've been only streaming for 11 minutes. Did the stream poop out? No, it's been going since one hour. Well, all right. Let's see, let's see. All right. Um, are you fluffy? You're so proper soft. For example, they won't be able to resist an ad ad adjacent item of the same type. See, the customer's attention has just shifted to the white teddy to the right. Okay. More white ones! I love them! <laughs> you can also encourage a shopping spree by connecting items with matching colors. In this case, the customer's attention moves up to the white bunny. Encourage the customer's impulse buying at the whole aisle will soon be sold out. Oh my god. This is actually really bad. Impulse buying from a little girl. Avoid situations that confuse the customer though. Oh, because it has a teddy teddy but also colors. Oh, right, right, right. If they have two choices, they'll have to think about which one they prefer. That's a surefire way to end their shopping spree and fail your objective. So make sure you arrange things 
to create a clear path from the first item to the last one. Ah, and now she's taking the bunny and then because... Okay, okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> Talk about questionable shopper ethics. As you play through the main game, you'll find a new ale to challenge you. Sell out every aisle in the shop and get a nice reward. All right, let's go. These are four items. All right, so we got an apple, pineapple, pineapple, banana. All right, so, oh, snap. Apple, onto an apple. And then the pineapple, then another, oh no. Then a banana, then another banana, and the pineapple. No wait, that doesn't work because it has the same colors, like that. That should work. Now let's see if we influence the customers. <laughs> Oh. And she's taking the apple. Wow. Fucking questionable. Oh my god. Wonderful. We're all sold out. Bloody Ludmilla. She knows her business. Okay. So now we sold out, so we can go back to Ludmilla. She will give us a new puzzle. Late in the journey. Oh, we got a bunch of journals. Oh, I don't think they're like too interesting. This is just a recap of what we've done. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let me go to her again. I want more shop puzzles. Now I've made that toy myself, so don't go dropping it into a puddle or anything. Of course, I'll take good care of it. I sold out. You told me to come back when I sell out. Oh. Doesn't that mask look a little bit like the mask of chaos to you? I wonder if it's supposed to symbolize the sun. You're right. Now that you mention it, the masked gentleman's mask had a sort of sun pattern too, didn't it? Well, that reminds me, Amy. I've been meaning to show you someone, to show someone my sun puzzle. Would you like to have a look? Yes. Stamp stamper puzzle 009, 35 piglets. This stamp is adorned by a blazing sun motif. Can you show how the design will look after you plonk the stamp down onto a piece of paper? choose from a b c or d well doesn't it depend on how you hold it wait so let's say well then it should just be flipped over right so it can't be A or B, it can only be C. Oh, I'm bad at this. So... Tch. 
This is... I mean, if you would hold the stamp, if you would turn the stamp and stomp it down, then it could be D as well. I would say C, but let me look at hints before I do it incorrectly again. The sun rays are mirrored, but the spiral in the middle is not. Oh. Yeah, the sun rays in C are not mirrored. And then D would be if I... Sorry. I'm too lazy to look at this. Is it just D? Have a look at picture C. It might be hard to tell because it's been rotated, but it's actually the same as B. You can exclude C as well. It just leaves D. Wait, did it say have a close look just in case though? What do you mean, just in case, though? Fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. Alright. I'm getting so suspicious. If they say, like, just in case, we might trick you. You'll get D. The spiral in the middle and the rays around the outside will all be mirrored when you press the stamp. I enjoyed that. Was that your bright idea, Luke? It was. I'm glad you warmed to that. The puns. The puns are so bad. <sighs> you won't see these rare mask styles anywhere else. Wow, there's so many. I wouldn't know which one to pick. Oh, they have dresses too. I can't say they're my color though. I believe the fitting rooms are behind the curtain. Well... I feel like we can wrap it for today. Well, it seems that we've gathered all the information we can. Let's head to the hotel. I believe all we have to do is keep on going up the street and it's just round the corner. Look, Professor, a clown! Ah, oh, let me guess. First time in Monte Dor, right? Hello, I'm Juggles, your friendly neighborhood clown, and you are. <laughs> Herschel Layton. I teach archaeology at Gresson Hollow University. And he's a famous puzzle solver, too. Oh, that's just lovely, and that hat looks superb on you, I must say. Speaking of hats, I'm sure I have a puzzle stashed somewhere in mine. Here you go, my gift to you. Puzzle 11, Backstage Blunder, 30 Pigrets. Oh no, Yuckles is supposed to be on on in a few minutes but he's just tripped and now there's juggling equipment all over the floor everything should be in pairs of two identically shaped and colored items but there is one object here whose twin seems to have gone missing which items twin is missing okay oh i think i know it already wait no let's let's do this not this because oh Wait a minute. 
Okay. One. Out. This one is out. Hold up. This one is out. That one is out. This one. That one. The blue ones. And these, I suppose. Then it's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No, that one is here. Okay. So all the ones on the floor are in pairs. <sighs> Let me think. Is the box an item? <laughs> The box is an item. <laughs> Correct. The box Yakult is holding is part of his juggling act too. Where could its twin have got to? Well, I don't care because I solved the puzzle. Wow, smashing! Your young friend wasn't joking, was he? Hey, here's a bit of local knowledge for you. See that big stone slab? That's our famous monument. The whole history of Monte Dor is written on it. Fab spot for photos too. Ah, yes. It's mentioned in the guidebook. It says it co commemorates the city's founding. That's the one! And there are plenty more tourist sites and offer here. Speaking of which, did you enjoy the parade? Yes, we did. We had quite an exhausting time, in fact. We're about to retire to bed. Oh, oh! Well, if you're looking for hotels, look no more. Closest to here is the Camel's Hump. Brilliant service. Just head down this road on the left and it will be on your right. You'll be there in no time. We're not too far from here either. Oh, by we, I mean the Stella Circus. We're a traveling troupe, you see? Pop over and see us if you get the chance. We're not moving anytime soon. All right. A new episode has been added to the trunk, ballooning out of proportion. What's the episode? Puck. It's time for a fest it's time of festive cheer. Oh carnival days are here. Oh Hey, watch where you put those feet. Sorry, mister, I was just singing the carnival song. I let you off this time, but remember to watch where you're Huh? Oh Not again. <laughs> That looks fun. Is this part of your incredible escape act? It's not. It's pinching, not an act. Ow. Careful, you'll lose these balloons. Hello, you two look like you're enjoying yourself. Mind if I join in? Mr. Clown here has got all tangled up in my balloons. Oh dear, done it again, have you, Bungle? What is it with you and the balloons? So, little jester, how about I entertain you with a little bit of fancy juggling while Bungle gets your balloons sorted out for you? Bungle, you get yourself out of the mess and give this young man back his possessions, you hear? But, but wait, I can't. That tickles. Wait, are you listening? Wow, that's amazing, mister. Isn't it? Oh. Hold on to your eyeballs, wait till you see this one. Well, that's so cool, how did you do that? <laughs> Help, I'm flying away. Hey, listen, quickly get me down before I... Help. 
and he's gone. So are these just like little sketches that happen while we're moving around? <laughs> What a huge statue, and there is another one over there. Where? Oh, there. The scale is enormous, typical of Monte Dor. There's a finger pointing to the shop. I don't know if we were supposed to go there, or if it was just like a... A hint for a coin. All right. On to the hotel. Just look at this place. Well, Professor, it looks like Mrs. Lador is putting us up in style. <laughs> I don't think I've ever stayed in quite such exotic accommodation before. I suppose a city that lives on tourism must have its fair share on fancy hotels. I can smell the roast lamb from out here. Let's go inside, Professor. All right, then let's... Wait, what's going on here? All right, I've had it up to here. I don't know why I wasted my time over you. Go for nothing balls of fluff. Aww, look how cute these bunnies are. Cute? You find these sniveling little fur balls cute? I've never seen an animal more pathetic than these two. I've had a mind to cast these rabbits out of the troop for good. Cast them out? Why would you do that? Simple. In these old rabbits can't learn new tricks. They're no good in my circus. They're an utter waste of time and resources. But that's horrid. I know. What if I took one and taught him some tricks for you? You? A mere child thinks he can train one of these stagnant, hopeless beasts where I, the ringmaster, have failed. I'm not a mere child. I can understand what they're saying. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they say they don't want to leave all their friends in the circus. They say they work very hard from now on. And they say they're sorry, don't they? Yes, they do. Please give them another chance. Hmm. <coughs> well, the rabbit show is a circus favorite, if it can still be salvaged. Fine. Take one of these floppy critters and get it to the master the dramatic arts. If you can manage that, they can both stay. You've got one week. But if its acting is wishy-washy or it starts nibbling on the said Mitchell, they're both out. Out, out. Got it? Yes, sir. Don't worry. I'll train your rabbit to become a splendid actor. Oh, oh, we have to choose a rabbit? No! Oh, they're both so cute! <laughs> oh, I want them both. I don't want anyone to stay in this ringmaster's hands. Oh, they're both adorable. <laughs> Man, the brown one looks so cute, but the white one has sloppy ears. Like, <laughs> I can't possibly decide. Wait, when I had rabbits as a kid, they had floppy ears too, so I want these. I'm so sorry. Ah! Oh my god, look how it's jumping. Oh no, it's so cute. Oh my god. Oh. Now 
that I see the brown one. This is so cute. I'm going to take the brown one in the sweet. Oh my. No, the white one. <laughs> Give your new rabbit a name. Mr. Oop. Nibbles. <laughs> oh my god, the way he's holding him! The rabbit show minigame has been added to the truck. Oh my god, look at him holding him! <laughs> Why is it so cute? I love this game. Have I, have I told you that before? I love this game. The rabbit show minigame has been added to the trunk. Befriend your rabbit and teach it some new tricks to perform in the rabbit show. <sighs> I see, you've gone for the brown one. Yes, I'm naming him Mr. Nipples. <laughs> well then, it's all yours. If it's really got what it takes, we'll gladly take it back into the circus. And the other one too. Wait, what happens to the other one? A sweet little fella, isn't he? Just remember to bring him back to the circus once you've trained him up. Pfft, never. Of course, I'm going to turn Mr. Nibbles into a great actor. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Nibbles? Is Mr. Nibbles trying to tell us something? Mr. Nibble says he won't let us down. <laughs> Don't worry, you fuzzy head. We'll get you back into the circus. Now perhaps we should go into the hotel. Oh my god, Mr. Nibbles. <gasps> Why is he so cute? Ooh. It says the Camel's Hump Hotel. Oh my god, I can't believe we got a rabbit. You found a new item, useless paint. Mm -mm. Okay. Let's zoom out again. I wanted to quit, but now I just want to train Mr. Nibbles. Let's inquire at the front desk. With any luck, they are already expecting us. Welcome, welcome. Do you have a reservation? Yes, I believe so. Is there anything reserved for one Herschel Layton? Ah, yes. Mrs. Lidor informed us of your arrival. We would like to welcome you as her special guest. One moment, please, while I find your keys. Do you suppose this place is owned by the Lidors? It's quite likely. Everything in this hotel is its own neat little place. That's very likely Henry. That's very like Henry. Professor, how well do you know Miss, Mr. Lidor? What's he like? I remember him as a thoughtful boy, very quiet and hardworking. I never really talked to him though. We both lived in the same village, but he was just a friend of a friend. I never got to know him very well. But you knew Angela quite well, didn't you, Professor? I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. If you could just sign here and here. Perfect. I'll have a couple of lovely rooms for you. Here are your keys. And here is your complimentary puzzle. Oh, well, what excellent service. <laughs> Oh my. My DS is running out of battery. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay. Sharing the burden. Puzzle 012. Right. Nito! Ah. Good morning. Um. I'm doing great. I am really enjoying the puzzle game. Also, we just acquired a rabbit. Okay, 
Two porters have to carry six pieces of luggage of unknown weight. Each piece weighs a different amount and they are labeled in order of weight from A to F, with A being the lightest and F the heaviest. Each piece weighs up to 10 kilograms and the total weight is 40 kg or less. Each porter can carry up to 20 kg at once and between them they want to carry it all in one go. How should they divide up the luggage between them? Pilot up, uh, pilot all up in their hands and then ring the bell. Slide the pieces of luggage from the left, blah, blah, blah. Okay, wait. So if they're divided from A to F, then we should probably just do the dice principle, right? Because on a dice, all the sides facing each other equal the same amount on every face. So the six is facing the one, the five is facing the two, the four is the three, you know? So maybe we should just add that principle. So the one carrying the F is also carrying the A and the one carrying the E is also carrying the B. Oops. But then C and D. Which one should be getting which one? We we'll probably need to figure out how much it is in total. So all of that is 40. And they weigh up to 10 kg. So let's say that one is 10 because that must be the heaviest and it's up to 10, so, right? You never realize that? Well, now you know. <laughs> I don't actually know if it has to do something with um, weight distribution as well. I don't know if that plays that much part in it, but you want each face to be likely to be like the same no i think i'm just talking bullshit but it is like that anyways that is 10 so let's assume that would be one and then i have four pieces of luggage left so if that would be nine that would be two and eight and three would that be 40 Wait, but then I, I wouldn't know it all. 11, 20, 30, 33. So it must be more than that. 33 means I'm missing seven. So let's say that is not one, two, three, but three four five how much would it be now 17 22 30 39 so one has to be one kg heavier but how would i know one three four seven nine ten yeah but i don't know how the distribution works i just know that a is the lightest and f is the heaviest but Why shouldn't it be one, four, five, six, nine, ten, you know? Wait, but does it even matter? Does it even matter? Let's assume that the numbers are like that. Then the boy over, wait. What did you say? 1, 3, that's 4, 9, 18, 25, 35. No, so these numbers are not correct. So let's say 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10. Let's say 4, 5, 6. Four, 
four, five, six, that's nine, eighteen, twenty-five, thirty-one, no, wait, what? Nineteen, twenty-seven, thirty-three, thirty-eight, no, that's too much. Oh my god. <laughs> mm, so this is 27. So we got 13 kilos left to distribute. So we could go... 13 could be... I haven't done math puzzles in school. I don't think this is too much math. I think it's not even relevant. Six, four, three? Six, four, three. Let's say that. Okay. So this boy is carrying 13. And then he would be carrying four and nine. So both would be at 13. And then it's six and eight. So let's say that boy would be carrying eight, then he would be carrying too much. Because it exceeds 20 kg. Each border can carry up to 20 kg at once. And between them, they want to carry it all in one go. So how about how about one is taking all the heavy shit so the other one is carrying the rest that would be in theory 19 and that would be 12, no, that would be 14, 18, 21, if it was distributed like that, but we don't know it. So... If he is carrying this and wait, I'm trying to get exactly 20, 10 plus 6 plus 4, so that would be B, C and F. And then A, E, R12 should be that. Am I brave enough to just test it? Fuck. <laughs> okay, C, B, and F are too heavy. There are six pieces of luggage, so your first assumption might be that each porter should carry three pieces. However, it's possible that one of them could take four pieces if they're light enough. Test this out by putting pieces A to D in one of the porter's hands. If they can't carry the four lightest pieces, then the only option is for the porters to take three pieces, pieces each. Right, okay, so A, B, C, and D are the lightest. So let's try that. Okay. So everyone has to take three each. So three plus four is seven plus six is 13, 21. Yeah, so it could be that. Um, Based on hint one, it should be clear that each porter can only carry three pieces of luggage. The challenge then is to divide them in a way that balances. First try giving one porter the heaviest piece of luggage and the other porter the second heaviest. 
I did try that. And then he gets that one and that one. And this one and that one. Oh. Well. Correct. A luggage crisis has been averted. My pleasure. Excellent work, sir. You are in room 502 and the young lady is upstairs in 602. Do you tell me if there is anything you need. Thank you very much indeed. I wonder if he just dishes out the same puzzle to everyone who stays here. No. Wait. This house looks awfully familiar. Hmm. <laughs> that shack looks awfully familiar. Yes, I know what you mean. Ah, so it wasn't just deja vu. This is going to bother me all day now. It looks rather out of place in this hotel. I wonder if it's a feature. We know this place. Wait, we can't actually interact with it? Okay. I'm Yu Ming. Lovely to meet you. I just wanted to share with someone how pleased I am with this hotel. Isn't it marvelous? The service is great and it's a stone's throw from the high street and all its shops. The only qualm I have with it's the name. I mean, come on, the Camel's Hump Hotel? It's not very appealing, is it? Actually, miss, I'm rather fond of the name. Really? Well, to each their own, though I've heard this establishment has nothing on Monte Dora's top hotel. You should definitely take the time to see it while you're here. We may just do that if we have time. Wait, which one is the top hotel? And why are we not booked into that one? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's get into the room. I need to save because I need to cook myself some food. I got 20 minutes. Now this is fancy. It's on a whole different level from Miss Salary, isn't it? This bed is so soft, I could fall asleep on it right now. We've barely arrived and I'm already exhausted. I don't know if I can keep up th with this city. Come on, Luke, we've only just started our inve investigation. Don't tell me you've burnt out after one little miracle. No, but what if the mask really does have magical powers? As the masked gentleman said, what do we do then? We can't say for certain one way or the other. Let's not jump to any conclusions. But Mr. Lador was powerful enough to build a city after finding the mask. Perhaps it also has the power to turn people to stone. Surely not. Those are two things. But it must have some sort of power, right? Why else would, I, would someone steal it? Perhaps, Luke, but I rather think that there is something more to this masked gentleman case. I doubt that, the, that we are even dealing with a true mask of chaos, after all. I saw that mask fall into a chasm years ago. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. I've been wanting to ask you, Professor. What was Randall like? You and Angela seem to know him very well. Yes, please tell us. About Randall? Absolutely. This mystery could have something to do with your past. You never know. It might be important. Please, Professor. I suppose you may be right. Very well. Uh, it would be about 18 years ago. Oh no, I want to make food, Professor. Randall, Angela, Henry and I all used to live together in a small place called Stansbury, just beyond the desert. It was a quiet little village, the kind where everybody knows everyone else. Randall was my best friend. He told me about all his hobbies, dragged me along on all his adventures. If not for him, I wouldn't even be an archaeologist. It's true, although I study it fer fervently today, 
I had little interest in the field of archaeology back then. What? I can't imagine you like that, Professor. That night we just listened to the Professor. It broke my heart to hear him recount how he had lost his best friend. But hidden in his story was a clue that would prove essentially to solving the case of the masked gentleman. The end. All right. Du, 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 du. All righty, people. Before we even start chapter two, I'm going to end the stream for today because I have to go to work. So, Mito Mito, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me for today's quest. Uh, it's been lovely and I'm sorry for the noise. Boop. I uh, hope you have a lovely day as well. I will probably see you in the next few days. And the next time we're tuning into this game, we're going to train our little rabbit, Mr. Nipples. So... I'll be happy to see you there next time. And again, support your no local nurses, especially all nurses in Germany. It's strike day today and so is tomorrow. So let's uh, strive and thrive in this world. Right. Okay. I'll see you next time. Bye.